signal. I think we're live. Oh, we've got 11 people here waiting. <laughs> oh my, nature finds a way. <laughs> nature finds a way, yes, yes. Okay, and we're live. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for waiting. We've been, uh, you know, just wasting time <laughs> not being live, <laughs> talking to each other, but I can't broadcast any of that because Leander started dropping up f bombs left and right and well we all know how youtube feels about f bombs they don't like them so got to keep those out i feel like i'm slowly turning into dr emmett brown from back to the future you guys want to see the full emmett brown effect hold on marty <laughs> how big my hair is getting <laughs> <laughs> oh my what was that leander i, I didn't catch that uh, nothing. No, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, now that as soon as we go live, look, now our viewers are dropping. Hey, um, uh, <coughs> Lewis, do you yeah. want to send some nice tweets about our show? Do you, would you like me to craft a, a beautiful tweet for you? That's not genius move. Podcast yeah. is live. Is I sh we should have done this before? Is live talking about talking our favorite favorite. There's nothing else to watch, so hopefully, hopefully people will show up. Our favorite gadgets of 2020. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, my. How sad is that? That's the that's best a, thing I can come up with on the fly. That's uh, a tough. There you go. That's all right. We're going to roll with that because we're already live, and I don't want to waste any, anyone else's time. So, Lewis, let me post that here, and uh, if you could send that out on the on the Cult of Mac corporate Twitter account, that would be great. Shout out to Jay Plemons. Cult guest time. That's how I imagine your voice sounds, Jay. Let's get this New Year's party started. More Stella, please. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, the Colt Club, the doors are wide open. We have the industrial walk-in Stella Artois fridge, the 40-man jacuzzi with industrial dress and jets. It's turned on. It's set to 110 degrees. I hope you guys can handle the heat. Gavin Smith is here. Jamin. Harrison. Oh, Zach Hicks is here. Great, Scott. Happy New Year from Shannon. Yeah, happy new year, guys! Thanks for and ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thanks for joining us. We got probably our best show of the year right now, undoubtedly the best show that's being streamed on YouTube at this very moment. So we're going to talk about all of our favorite stuff of 2020, and it might just be me because I don't think Leander and <laughs> Lewis actually have any picks. <laughs> and uh, we got to talk about sh sh sweaty ears, the sweat gates, <laughs> people with ears that are just way too sweaty. That's what you left out. I'm disappointed that guy's name wasn't Pete Sweaty. That would have made this story all the better. <laughs> He's got sweaty ears, and the AirPods Max don't like that. A lot of people wrote this story off. I think there's something to this. I really do, and I'll present to you my case. I don't think this is Ben Gate, but from what I've seen, this is a real issue. This is not a fake issue. I don't think people are making this up, and it's, it's concerning. I'll be honest. With a pair of... Um, $600 headphones, it's kind of concerning that your ear sweat could get into the ear cups and and start affecting them. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's AirPods Max sweat gate, which everyone completely discounted, and I get it. I get why, but we're going to talk about it anyway. Uh, let's see here. Well, <clears throat> since Lewis and Leander look like they're ready to go, I think we should just go ahead and jump right into the show, fellas. Let me get my notes open here. Oh, there they are. <laughs> Baby. And uh, we'll just dive right into it. Happy uh, New Year's Eve to everyone. God, is it New Year's Eve already? That's amazing. Let's just jump in. Let me see if uh, Mrs. Doubtfire is here somewhere. I think she's around here. Mrs. Doubtfire? Yes? Are you here? Oh, yes. I'm ready to go. Okay, because the people are waiting. They want to hear more about AirPods Max. Ooh, sweaty. Okay, well, with that said, let's go ahead and just dive right into it, Ms. Doubtfire. Okay. Hello, and welcome to Coolcast, the best 30 plus minute alpha conversation you're going to hear all week long. I'm your host, Airfront Elijah. Join me today when you're with him every day is a New Year's Eve party and a chance to end up in the slammer or in a high speed chase or running from drug lords. He's the founder of Cultimac. Leander Caney is here. Hello. <laughs> Also with us, he may be responsible for several pending lawsuits against Cult of Mac by Cult of Mac staff, but there's no denying his methods and tough discipline have kept the Cult of Mac writers cranking out the stories all year long. He's the managing editor of Cult of Mac, Lewis 
Wallace is here. Ah, the year is over. Finally. Uh, well, At long say, last. What a year. What a year. Presuming that 2021 is going to be any better. Oh, it's going to be so much better. I, 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 I think we hit, hit a... Uh, low point last week and uh everything's just coming up better i just feel more optimistic i, I it's just unca- uncanny i i don't know i don't oh, know what to say i hope you're right man i kind of feel like it's gonna be more of the same but uh we'll see what happens uh, but i mean hopefully it can't be worse than 2020 or stranger <laughs> than 2020 and i'm telling you this airpods max Schwedgate story is the perfect story to end this year because this is one of the strangest apple gates that i have personally seen and uh, people are writing it off, like I said, but I don't think this story is fake. I think it's a real story. And we'll talk about it more uh, in just a second. But <clears throat> if you will allow me to promote a product for support of the show. Oh, you know what? Dang. I'm, I'm going to go into browser mode. Son Whoa. of a gun. I forget this every single week. I'm going to go into oh. browser mode. Let's see what happens. Nothing. Yeah, that's what I thought. Let me go in and pick out my browser here so you can actually see. There we go. What's going on with the browser? Where is my browser? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> if only you guys could see how this many freaking... St- stunning is audio. This is, uh, <laughs> this is Leo Laporte level production. This is why our numbers are surging. Uh, yeah, I want to tell, tell you guys about Colt Cloth Mark II. Colt Cloth <laughs> Mark II. This is the evolution of Colt Cloth. I launched Colt Cloth in 2015, and it is the absolute best way to keep your gadgets, your lenses, your, uh, your sunglasses, anything with a screen, anything with glass, glass, metal, you name it, plastic, sparkling clean. We've launched a new line of Colt Cloth that I'm calling Colt Cloth Mark II, and I just want to focus on this one product first, right? This is the new Colt Cloth duo i have one here this thing is truly amazing i'm going into full uh but wait there's more mode <laughs> Billy Mays. this is the new cult cloth and as you can see it has a short pile on one side and a longer pile on the other side it's a dual that's fiber design and I, as i like advanced. to say it's business on one side <laughs> and even more business on the other side baby <laughs> My in bar- browser mode. Oh, yeah, it is. Let me go back to full earth so you guys can see this. <laughs> so here it is. And what I love about this thing is it's so versatile. You can use it on a screen. So if you spray like a little bit of cleaning solution on your screen, right, if you really want to get some serious results, this short pile won't soak up all your liquid, which is what a longer pile will often do. And you'll just be wiping and smiling, wiping and smiling, right? <laughs> and then you're like, uh-oh, I got a bigger job. Or you have an iPhone with a case on it like I do. I don't want to show anyone's text here. Let me turn that off. You have a, uh, an iPhone, and it has a case around it. Well, you have that little lip on the outer edge, right? And n- most cleaning cloths will just sweep the debris into that crevasse, and that's gross. Not Colt Cloth Duo. You can see with this long pile design, it will actually reach down into the crack. You can see how long it is. And it will pull everything out of the crevasse that you have. This works great on lenses, on your glasses. This will absolutely obliterate oils, uh, debris, dust, you name it. It leaves nothing behind but sparkling glass and metal. We also have a brand new polish cloth, which is even better, more effective. It's made of our crushed fiber, just like this is, which these are special threads that go through a process that breaks down the surface area and creates all these cracks, which drastically enhances the cleaning ability. And you can actually feel it in action. So like when you hold it up like this, when you run your fingers over it, you'll actually feel it grabbing onto your fingertips. It's kind of, it's kind of strange. And that's what it does to the dirt. It just picks it up, wipes it away. We have an all-new carry cloth. This is like one of the best portable cloths that you can get. Super high quality, the best microfiber you can buy. And uh, as you can see, I have a large hand. I have like Arsenio Hall hands, right? And you put this cloth on here, and it covers your whole hand. Like, most cloth are tiny. And these ones are large. They're in charge. That way, when you're rubbing something down, (laughs) if you know what I'm saying, you won't accidentally have some exposed skin that smudges your lens or your sunglasses. fingerprints. Or whatever. What's that? Leaves fingerprints that can be traced. You don't want anyone tracing your prints. That's true in your line of business. I know that for sure. 
So check it out. If you want to support me, if you want to get yourself some of the best cleaning cloths that are out there, you can go to coltcloth.co, coltcloth.co, and uh, check out the new Colt Cloth. And if you use code, code coltcast at checkout, you'll score a free carry cloth. These things are fantastic. They're so portable. You'll score one of these for free with any order. Boom. Okay. <coughs> Named after John Kerry? Yeah. He, uh, he's one of my In favorite public officials. <laughs> 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 I just love John Kerry. And uh, he uses these on his chin to keep it nice and polished. You know? He's coming back, right? <laughs> That's the secret of his shiny chin. Is the, is <laughs> wow, I had no idea. Well, most people don't know that, Lewis. That's why I told you. Uh, okay. Does anyone care about AirPods Max Sweatgate? Let's talk about it. Because people are, I think they're tired of Apple Gates. Don't you, Lewis? I mean, they just don't want to hear anymore about Apple Gates. Uh, you know, until it affects them. Until it affects you. And well, yeah, go ahead. Well, there was no Apple Gate for the, you know, it has been an Apple Gate for a while, hasn't it? I, I was, you know, something I was wondering about. Um, the iPhone 12, there was no Apple gate about the, the 12s. Mm -hmm. That's a good you know, point. Every year there's something, right? What was yeah. the 11? Um, I don't remember. Interesting. I'm not even sure there was one with the 11, actually. There they was seemed something. To, it was something that was really s trivial, right? And, and, and it showed up weeks later. Yeah. Like with the batteries or something. I can't remember what it was. But there was, but you know, like as regular as clockwork, year after year, there was always some gate, wasn't there? Yep. Especially with the iPhones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then this year, there wasn't one. So, you know, they haven't seen one for a while. Yeah. I think people are just sick and tired of gates. And if you don't know what we're talking about, so this user on Twitter was discussing this unbelievable amount of condensation, ear sweat that he had building up inside of his Air Max, his Air Max, that's what they should call it, his <laughs> AirPods Max. And when I first saw this, I was like, dude, this has got to be fake. Look how much friggin' water is in there. Whose ears shred this bad? And they're full of water. And he was complaining that the amount of water that had gotten in here was causing ear detection issues, which I presume to mean that when he was putting on his AirPods Max, they weren't noticing that they were actually on his head. And so he took off his cups. Where are my cups? Where are my AirPod Ma AirPods Max? Oh, shoot. I don't have them around. Um, when he pulled off his magnetic cups, he saw all this condensation building up inside here. And he said, my concern is that this water, can I make this bigger? No, it just gets smaller. Isn't that great? When I press Control Plus, it just makes it smaller. That's that great. this water is actually going to get inside these holes and cause problems within the, the electronics. Now, I think that is a valid concern. The question is, is this real? Is this a real problem? But if you think about a cold window inside your house, this is exactly what happens, right? So water is attracted to cold surfaces. And well, it condenses. Yeah, it condenses onto cold surfaces. So I think that this, the premise of this makes sense. And the, the thing is, is like I started going through and asking him questions. And my first question was, well, were you wearing these like – inside a cold room and he said yeah it was pretty cold and the airpods max were cold to the touch and he said he was wearing them for 12 hours straight and i was like dude come on 12 hours straight who wears their airpods <laughs> max for that long and he said That's yeah you know, time. on and off but i was wearing them for a total of 12 hours well here's the thing so if you go through the comments in this twitter thread there's like three or four other people who have also said they're having the exact same problem as him and more than that, I did a, uh, a video on this, if I can find it, and I was just covering the story. I had probably another three or four people who also are having the same problem. So this story hasn't blown up in any way. People are largely ignoring it, and like I said, I kind of understand why. So this video didn't get very, very many views, but you can see that for the low amount of views that it got, there are quite a few people... I would say three or four who, who are having this exact same problem. Nearly half a dozen. You know? So <laughs> all I'm saying is it's concerning. It's concerning. Have it's you guys popped, popped the caps to see if you got them in yours? It, it, it got them, got, uh, you know, water or anything at all in, inside of yours? 
I haven't looked, but I'm going to try doing a what? test where I wear them for a long period of time. So from what I can gather, from what I gather, this problem does seem rather rare. And it's specific to people who have sweaty ears. Some people have sweaty <laughs> ears, right? And it's not just your ears, right? It's also it, it's also is it the, though, is the it, head it, area is, around your ear. Is it sweat I mean, or is it just condensation? You yeah, you always get it. You always get sweaty ears with earphones, especially with like you know the pleather or the leather um, cups. Yes. You know, I mean, you always always get it. Um, but inside, um, I mean, you know, in the story that we did. They said that you know a lot of gamers complain about this. It's it's like a factor of you know of wearing your headphones for a long time, uh, and there's even a company, uh, right, Lewis? What was the name of that company that sells oh, um, like uh, you know ear cup sweat bands to soak up the right. sweat? <laughs> but you know the, the whole thing Moisture about Apple's shield. is that it had that special mesh, you know, that custom designed mesh tech t fabric that's supposed to, um, you know. Uh, no, yeah, especially on the headband, you know, like it, it, it's it's open for it to sweat. But inside the the ear cups are made from memory foam, and the whole point is to make a, a, a an acoustically tight seal, isn't mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm. But it's also apparently, you know, trapping moisture. Sweat. <laughs> sweat, yeah. But here's the other thing, sweat and here's sleep. the thing that no one else talks about is virtually all headphones are made out of plastic. Plastic doesn't condense water. Metal does. So if you wear, so the, the AirPods Max are just giant ingots of metal. They're metal outside and metal inside. So if you're in a cold location, they react, they, they, they become cold, whereas plastic would not. And then the condensation from your sweaty ears will all, instead of just remaining vapor floating around inside your headphones, this is my scientific explanation, <laughs> will be attracted to the cold metal because the metal conducts, you know, cold. So Apple has a headphone that's not like other headphones in that it's all metal, which I love about them, but that could be the results or that could be causing this problem. All I'm saying is people are writing this off as a non-issue. I don't think this is a non-issue. In fact, I think, it's, I think it's concerning. I'm not gonna get rid of my AirPods Max, but if you have this problem, think about it. Over a you period of time, you keep getting water in there. Eventually it's gonna get into your AirPods Max and it could ruin them. Sorry, Leander, go ahead. Well, yeah, you're gonna have to get some. I think you, Erfan, should dig up some of those um, the little um, packets, you know, of the, the dehumidifier packets that you get in electronics, <laughs> and stick them in the cups, you know. That way, you'll be you'll be protected. Wait a second. Wait a or second. Or some baking soda, Desicant. maybe. Now, you know what? I didn't even realize this until right now. I've got the perfect solution. Hold on. <laughs> oh, a coat cloth. <laughs> Here's all you need to do. You get yourself some coat cloth, right? <laughs> Stuff it in there. Right. Put them on the cups just like so. This is all you need. And then you just put them back on your head just like that. <laughs> Problem solved. solved. Now, yeah. I can barely hear Thanks. you guys because cold cloth is so <laughs> thick and absorb <laughs> absorbent. <laughs> but no more water going inside of your AirPods Max. The problem is solved, and it you know, costs you a very small amount of pain and money. You know, uh, yeah. those desiccant pillow, or uh, I think that's what they're called, desiccant pillows, those are actually what, uh, in well, Ed was writing this story, he found like, a, it was actually a in-ear monitor maker, but they, they said basically, hey, you know, you put these things in your ears, uh, sweat's going to happen, mm -hmm. and what they recommend is put it in this uh, airtight, I guess they, these things ship with a Pelican case, put it in there with a desiccant, and uh, takes care of the problem. It won't work with a smart case, of course. That was a point that um, somebody else online made about the smart case. They're like, well, that explains those huge uh, slits in the smart case. Lewis, you brought this up. You were What's even saying this last why show. You were like, there? why is that there? Because there Could are be. these huge openings. Do you have your AirPods Max? Do either of you guys have them handy? I, uh, I don't have mine around. I wish I did. No, mine okay. on the other side of the I room. I had to return mine. You returned yours? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <I told> you <laughs> you're the <laughs> rightful owner. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So the, the smart case has like this ventilation, these ventilation cuts in the top and the bottom. And Lewis was commenting last show. He's like, do these seem necessary to you? And I was like, yeah, I, I even said this jokingly. Yeah, they're for ventilation, man, so that you get the condensation out. They actually are for ventilation, man, so that they, they get the condensation out. And uh, I guess to me, a lot of people are saying this guy's faking it. That might be true. I don't think that he is. I found him to be genuine. And uh, after hearing that at least five or six or seven other people have said they're having the exact same problem. I'm like, okay, this is not 
I don't think this is fake. This is a legitimate problem. Is it going to hurt your AirPods Max? I don't know. It seems like it might. And for a pair of $600 headphones, that is concerning because if you have water damage in your headphones, guess what? That's not going to be covered in your <laughs> Apple Care Plus warranty. I don't think. They don't cover water damage, do they? There you go. Uh, not usually. Apparently, I'm the only one that cares about this issue, but... Uh, would you guys at least agree with me that this is a real legitimate issue? Lewis? I can't believe that you talk about how concerned you are, and yet you haven't even popped the ear cup to check. Well, I've taken my ear cups. <laughs> Hold on now. Hold Good on. point now, Lewis. Good point. Hold on now, Lewis. <laughs> I did pop the top a couple times, not right. to check for this in, 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 uh, intentionally, but I have popped, and I didn't notice anything there. So I, I need to do some tests. So, you know, Colt Command Center... It's nice and warm in here, and I never wear my AirPods Max for more than an hour. So, and honestly, I'm built for heat. I, I'm long, I'm lanky, I got big hands. I'm built for desert terrain, so I don't start sweating easy. You know what I mean? But, you know, <laughs> some guys, they're, they're pitting <laughs> out. I mean, they're going full bomber all the time. I mean, imagine what bomber would do to these. He would absolutely destroy these things in a matter of, of days. And the I other mean, thing is, is the corrosion factor. So if you're getting, like, sweaty ear moistness, is it going to corrode anything in there? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you don't want that stuff getting wet. Uh, they're not water resistant at all. But, uh, you know, if, if it's a real problem, we'll still hear more about it, right? Because it's really cold in the Midwest and people have them there. And, you know, it, it'll take some time. More, more people hear about it, the more people will actually pop those things and check, right? Pop I mean, the top. there's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pop the top. There was, I mean, if you haven't seen the pictures, there's a fair amount of condensation inside these things. I mean, I, I can't imagine that the guy just put that in there for giggles. I mean, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it, it happened naturally. I know a lot of people are saying they don't believe it. And I can understand that because when you look at the amount, of, let me go back in the browser mode. When you look <laughs> at the amount of ear sweat that is in here, I get it, man. I mean, you're like, dude, no one's ears will shed that much. I mean, look at that big, at, that big old drip right there. It's like, Oops, it's like he was catch. running in a triathlon or something. I was like, dude, you got a healthy amount of ear sweat going on there. But just because it hasn't happened to you and you don't shed this bad doesn't mean it doesn't happen to other people. This amount of sweat that happens right here, this is probably what comes out of Steve Ballmer's ears in 30 to 40 minutes right there. That guy, if he doesn't drink a gallon of water a day, he is in risk of being dehydrated. So people sweat at different levels, you know? And again, you have to use these in the right scenario. Long period of time in a cold environment or a chilly environment so that the ear cups get cold and then the condensation is attracted to the coldness of the metal. That's kind of like the scenario where you will start seeing these droplets. But I've had people reach out and say, I'm sitting in a 70 degree room and I have droplets forming in my headphones. So I don't know. Take that have, as you will. I think it's a real issue and I think it's something that you should at least be aware of. Yes, Lewis. Aside from these marathon recording sessions, uh, I mean, the longest I've ever worn headphones is probably in a recording studio. And yeah, your ears can get kind of sweaty, but uh, I don't know, 12 hours. I, I, I mean, I guess it, this guy said he was a gamer. Is that right? Uh, I don't know if he said he was a gamer. I mean, I, I agree. 12 hours is... That's a long That's an time. insane session, yeah. That's um, not even good for your ears. I mean, although I guess if you got it quiet, it doesn't matter. But uh, I, I did, <laughs> after wearing those things for a few hours, uh, testing them, I don't know. I took them off, and I, I actually felt kind of almost disoriented because they do have a really nice, tight, uh, you know, nice, tight grip, right? They, it, they feel nice. They definitely grab on. Yeah, and it's like, very quiet. And then you take them off, and you're like, whoa, I'm back on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just illustrate my point one last time, okay? Let me go into browser mode again. Check out this amount of water. And you're like, <laughs> you're like, oh, man, uh, who could possibly produce that amount of water in their ears? I present to you Exhibit A. <laughs> Showing a picture of Steve Ballmer pitting <laughs> out as the ultimate alpha male here on stage. <laughs> That's who produ produces that amount of sweat, okay? Are you telling me you don't think this madman right here could fill up these entire cups with water? It'd be like a freaking water cooler. You'd hear it. It'd be like, bloop, 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 bloop. when he took Jeez. them out, all the water would come pouring out. So I don't know. All right, Lewis. Well, since we're talking about AirPods Max, for those people out there that are like, you know what? $600, that's not as premium as I demand. There's a product <laughs> out there for those people. Am I right? 
Yeah, we've, I, it's weird. I mean, well, it's not weird, but uh, already there's a few things that have come out. Uh, one, and this is what I'm sure is number one everybody's uh, wish list, is uh, gold-plated AirPods Max. <laughs> I would actually love to have a pair of gold-plated AirPods Max. <laughs> every, uh, every time that there's a new AirPod, or I'm sorry, a new iPhone, uh, this company Caviar, you know, comes out with these crazy designs. They're always super expensive, super, you know, usually super gold and kind of crazy, <laughs> crazy looking. Uh, so they've come out with AirPods Max. Uh, they're actually even more expensive than the original. These cost uh, a cool hundred and eight thousand dollars. That's it. <laughs> One hundred and eight thousand dollars. Oh my gosh! Dollars. They don't come with a car. Uh, they are gold plated. And the headband is covered in crocodile leather, which probably defeats the purpose of the mesh. But uh, anyway, uh, you can get them in black and white, and uh, you've got one-click ordering for your convenience. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a, a a link to where you can buy those. I'm sure everybody wants to get a pair. I hope this is an affiliate link that's in this story. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> you only need to sell one pair to some <laughs> drug czar, and uh, you're going to be set for, for, for at least a couple months. Look at those things. I'll be honest, Lewis, those things are hideous. Those <laughs> might be the worst looking headphones I've it's, ever seen. It's a uh, it's questionable fashion statement for sure. <laughs> not it's it's definitely not understated. Uh yeah. But, but so then there is actually th- th- this thing is actually I, I when I heard this I'm like, "Wow, how's that work?" This this is kind of an interesting AirPods Max accessory and it's called the Max Stand. Uh-huh. It's by a German design studio called Floating Pixels and uh this it's a stand that holds the the headphones upright, uh, you know, which is all fine and good. But what it does, it it adds wireless charging, so you don't have to plug in a cable. Oh it's shoot! Just... I saw this. This actually looks interesting. Oh wait, I'm on the how, wrong. I'm on how the does wrong that way. work? How does it add wireless charging? I, that is exactly that was my very first question. So what it is is there's a little um, dongle kind of thing that that you put into the ear cup where the lightning. You know, cable is supposed to go. Yep. And uh, it then that it charges through there, um, and you can pop that out if you want to use lightning cable or whatever. And I'm sure it'd be the first thing you'll lose, right? But um, <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I thought it seems like a cool uh, what? Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So you put it in a stand, and then it charges wirelessly. Yeah, and then you just pick them up and wear them. You don't have to ever worry with messing around. And plus, it keeps them, you know, in a nice way. I mean, one thing about headphones is it's it's a little bit troublesome sometimes to find a way to store them that is elegant yeah, yeah and this thing looks elegant it's very small um you know it, i will say right now this is a you know it's a product that's been created it doesn't actually exist uh they're on kickstarter they're trying to get people to buy in and it's an all or nothing thing so you know if you want some you go over to kickstarter right now and uh I'm sign up and right now yeah they're gonna they've got a uh, super early bird deal i believe is still available for like 59 euros about set a little over 70 bucks it looks like a good thing to me. Uh, if I had AirPods Max, I, I think I might jump on it. It's an interesting idea for sure. Hopefully this product a, actually materializes. <laughs> Sorry, I, thought of, yeah, I was going to say with Kickstarter, I mean, I, you know, I, I've backed a few projects um, uh, over the years. And actually, I've got everything. I just got some bike um, uh, carrier that I backed. It was a good 18 months ago. And I'd Whoa. forgotten about it. I was like, oh, my God, is this thing ever going to deliver? Um, and then it it finally showed up, you know. So, it it did work. This is a clever, clever stand. This is like one of the best headphone stands I've ever seen. That's a really genius idea for a headphone stand, isn't it? Because it's a really small, yeah, like little puck with a couple of indentations, and you and it nestles that you put you you put them in there. I mean, I've got this ridiculous, um, uh, you know, uh, stand here for some headphones like this thing that you could you could basically store a, a shirt on. <laughs> It'd have to be a pretty small shirt, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that I, looks nice. I, I I gotta say, I mean, I I thought it looked like a good good product. I mean, I don't, I know what you mean about Kickstarter. There was a time when everybody was running Kickstarter things every day. I was just like, oh god, give me a break. But this one actually looks looks like an interesting idea. Uh, I I think it's a legit company, and uh, seems like a great idea. Um, they make these in different colors, right, Lewis? Because this this contrast situation that I that I see going on down here, I'm not a big fan of this. I'm going to need them to match the color of my space gray. Yeah, no, that I don't know. Okay. Uh, All right, well. I, you and, you go. know, it's also a Kickstarter thing. I mean, I, I did not in, oh, yeah. investigate this Kickstarter thing. Um, I don't know if they offer, like, 
extra goals if they I mean, a lot of times if you reach a certain goal and get it funded then they say oh and hey now we'll uh open up a new opportunity and if you have already funded you could get a uh, different color or something so maybe they do that I, I, i'm not actually sure i haven't i have not actually talked to these people but uh. yeah it looks like some people are asking about the dongle so if you're just joining us um so i was wondering that same thing and it looks like that's a common question here so like how does this thing wirelessly charge so you said there's something that you plug into the lightning port right because they're not showing the it the dongle goes into the lightning port it, it's it looks i mean the drawing that i saw or the the photo whatever uh looks a little bit like one of the um oh there have you ever go. used like a logitech unifying yep. usb c hub it's it's yep. a little bit like that a little tiny discrete thing and it looks actually smaller than that uh, but it it and it looks like it's kind of oh there it is yeah it's it's kind okay. of flush, I brought up right? the Kickstarter page yeah it I'll put a link to this in the show notes too if people are interested there it is it's tiny it's a tiny little looks, dongle that you looks put in quite there. elegant doesn't yeah. it yeah yeah looks great I mean it's not real it's is just it concept art yeah yeah I mean <laughs> the, I you get it in it's <laughs> actually like the size of a, a you know cocktail onion. <laughs> It's like it's virtually not even there. And then when it ships, it's going to be like this four by four <laughs> inch power brake that bolts in there. It's going to weigh like a half kilo. Now they're kilo. even heavier. <laughs> you're going to have to be like your head's going to tilt like this all the time because it's, it's so it dang so heavy. Cold. Yeah. Oh God. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, it looks like a good product to me. I, I, I was excited about it's very it. Very interesting. And, uh, huh. Very interesting. Well, I, I mean, more power to them. I hope they're able to uh, make this work. Okay, here we go. Why am I looking? Okay, I, I'm on the Kickstarter page now, and I got all my answers here. These are great graphics, too. So apparently they're, they're planning on matching the base to the different colors of the AirPods Max, including uh, the Kermit the Frog all green the right there. What's that? They have silver, green, pink, sp sky blue, and space gray. Oh. Yeah, so they got them all. Thank God I didn't do my research. <laughs> uh, they're at fourteen thousand four hundred ninety-three dollars of a hundred and eighty-four thousand. Yeah, got a ways to go. That's just kind of an odd goal. Why not just make it an even one hundred eighty-five thousand? It's one hundred eighty-four, two hundred ninety-eight dollars. <laughs> well, and is it cents. is it because it's a uh, um, you know I mean the base thing was in euros, right? So oh, okay. maybe, maybe in Euros, it's 170 a year. Lewis Wallace coming in for the save. That's probably exactly what happened. Uh, Jamin. Jamin. He says Apple will probably Sherlock, Sherlock them next gen. <laughs> you might be right, dude. This is too good of an idea to not include on the uh, on the next gen AirPods Max. Actually, what am I saying? They're not going to include it for free. It's going to be like $139, <laughs> right. you know? This is a oh, clever yeah. stand. I can't get over the stand. I can't get over how clever it is. Yeah, it's a really great idea. That's a really great idea. I, I just uh, I just pledged, so you did. Wow, yeah. nice. Oh man, it's a wave. It's a wave. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, we got uh, we got almost fifty people here watching live. Let's see if we can get this up to the goal. One hundred eighty-four thousand. I need each of you to buy fifteen pairs. Put we're your gonna, money down right now. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get them <laughs> over the uh, over the finish line. So yeah, there you go. Very cool little product here. Um, so I think these are they're planning on launching these in March. And oh no. I'm, frozen who's frozen whoa who's frozen what happened wow everything went quiet and then i heard a little weird like Ooh, was i gone i wasn't gone for like an hour and a half or anything right i mean i wasn't <laughs> what day is it? <laughs> no. no you didn't go anywhere lewis we heard you the entire time Whew. yeah okay I, I, I swear i didn't swear you did not swear so i appreciate I that not. you <laughs> kept control of yourself oh he's uh, professional Lewis, is there another part of the story? I feel like there's one other thing that you were going to mention. All right, yeah, uh, and this this is actually legit and available shipping today, I believe. Uh, Waterfield Designs, which is San Francisco-based company oh, yeah. here, uh, yeah. they, they came up with something called the Max Shield Case, which is an actual case case that will actually protect your AirPods Max and make them, you know, it, it's I don't know, I I'm not a fan of the uh, smart case they shipped with. I know you guys keep saying you like it but uh i do like them yeah <laughs> anyway uh this is this is more like a traditional uh headphones case and it it even has a little like um they call it a, a magnetic leather butterfly that that goes in there and and you can use this bigger case either with the smart case or without it uh but that little leather butterfly if you don't have it in the smart case will put it into that low power mode which is one of the big problems uh, that i had with the whole design right. is like oh my gosh you know, you have to take this 
smart case with you to really to to force it into the low power. I mean, I guess it kicks into that after a couple of hours or something. But okay, anyway, so you're, you're uh, saying that this will allow you to put your AirPods Max in with the smart case. That's that's their workaround. I, I've you got it here. Do you want to see it? You could do it either way. You can have it with the smart case. Yeah. Or without it, and and if you use the smart case, then that that magnetic leather butterfly folds down flat, so it does not get in the way. If you chuck the smart case, leave it at home, then the little leather butterfly folds up, so that it goes in and it keeps the ear cups from banging each other, which is the big problem. Whoa. And it, it puts it into low power mode because it's magnetic. So here comes El Caney getting his hands on the bag. Oh look, of course, Ooh, El Caney's that. got Ooh. one. It wow. showed up yesterday. Uh, Lewis, okay. got his, Lewis, Lewis contacted them to, you know, for them to send it to me. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, it's made out of leather and uh, and canvas, wax, wax canvas. canvas. I, I love their wax canvas products. It's, it's got nice. a lot of... And it's got a lot of storage in it. It's got zippers. Um, I can actually... I can read what it says. I mean, it's, there's a stretch mesh pocket with leather closures that stretch utilizes mesh. the negative interior space. It looks so you like can put a, an adapter in there. It looks like a carry case for your Sony CD Walkman. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the exact same shape as it would be in the '90s. It is, yeah. There's a little handle here. Can you hold it up to the camera, Leander? Because I can't really see it. Hey, there Can you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. There's a little carry case, yeah. and then it opens up. And here's what Lewis was saying. Right. You can put it in, um, you know, with the uh, with the, with the case that comes with it. It'll accommodate that. But if you don't want to use that case, it has these two magnets here, uh -huh. inside that are like in a flap. And they actually, you know, they they um, they hold together with the magnets, and then you can put it to, you know, you can use it like that. Okay, so it will it will still put your AirPods Max in sleep mode if you yeah. don't have the smart. Oh, that's smart. And it and it and it protects them. It stops them clacking together like a pair of castanets. <laughs> yeah, right. it's, I kind of like that effect, but yeah, it has a good it, sound. I find it to be charming. Yeah. Click 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 click. So that and actually, it's all, it's all yeah, plush and furry inside. Yeah, I saw that. You know, got so, space for your cord in there. You can put some AirPods Pro or some other things. You know, uh, it's yeah. got plenty of storage. I mean, if I was going to travel with these things, uh, I would either do that or maybe, maybe just like a little refrigerator magnet to put it into sleep mode. Oh, <laughs> something I, I can put in my pocket. I think uh, Donald Philemon's question would be: Is how many ounces of ear shred can those absorb? Can, uh, can he put his uh, AirPods Max in there and have it absorb all of the ridiculous eight ounces of liquid that, that evaporate off his ears? You know, you could store the uh, desiccant pillows in there in a the little mesh enclosure and everything would be fine. I know. Everyone's complaining. Solves that's, another problem. Solves a problem that, that we didn't even know Apple had until <laughs> after this case came out. Apple's should start selling those. Is Apple desiccant <laughs> packs. comes in? It comes in like a 10-pack for twenty nine ninety nine. And you just keep one in your AirPods Max case, and there you go. Problem solved. Or they can sell um, little little ear ear socks, the the eye ear <laughs> socks, right? And then you can just put them on your ears and then just wear them as you're wearing your AirPods Max. That will solve the problem, too. And, of course, it's made from a, a uh, acoustically transparent mesh so that you still receive all the audio signals without any of the moisture. All right, cool. So there's all three AirPods Max accessories. And uh, there's we filled you in on the AirPods Sweatgate story. I again, am I going to return my AirPods Max? No, but I do think this is something to be aware of. I don't think it's nothing. A lot of people just wrote it off and they're like, "Dude, I can't believe this is clickbait." It is kind of clickbaity. I agree. I, I mean, I totally agree. But what? it is also real. I think it's, it's real. Not clickbait. Oh, it was clickbait. Oh, it's an interesting story. Yeah, but be, because oh, it's interesting. Somebody might click on it and read it. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> clickbait is like 80% of the reason that this show even exists. So, look, I totally admit that it's a little clickbaity, <laughs> but people are tired of gates. I totally understand. I know I've said that 12 times. I think this is a real story. Clickbait gate. Yeah, you know. Well, it's because it's a gate. People are like, dude, not another gate. You're just doing this for clicks. And I'm like, well, you're partly right, but it's also kind of real, you know? So. We actually did not include any kind of condensation gate or uh, sweat gate in our post. Just to, just to be clear. Yeah, I I, Although, I should say you, you you definitely should distance yourself from me because I did include that in my <laughs> YouTube story. I had, I intentionally put hashtag sweat gate. But it, for me, I was doing it and I was I was kind of being cheeky. I was like, here we go, it's sweat gate. You know, ha ha ha. Here we go, right. it's another gate. But it actually yeah, is, Leon, 
turn it out Leander to be kind of accurate. called it condensation gate in our newsletter. I mean, it's it's a, it's a, it's the joke, right? I mean, yeah. we, we're all Apple fans. We know, oh, no, here's another gate. Oh, gee. Yeah. And I just like calling it sweat gate because it allows me to make the Pete uh, Shorty family recipe jokes, which, you know, are one of the classic SNL sketches of all time. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, well, go Google it. Uh, all right. I think that's all of our Apple stuff. Look, I mean, it's New Year's Eve. There's not a ton of Apple stuff going on here. So we're going to go ahead and jump into – what? Did I forget something? The oh. Apple car stuff. Oh, did I, did I totally skip over that? You appear totally. to have. Yeah, I did. All right. Should we talk about it? Does nah, anyone, skip it. <laughs> does anyone care about an Apple car? Uh, well, all right. well, you know, I mean, yeah. Go ahead. after last uh, week Apple. talking about it, I mean, you know, it's worth mentioning, don't you think? Sure. That's what I thought, too. That's one of the reasons why I put it on the docket, because I was like, you know what? We should at least mention it. So let me just hop on into browser mode here, and I will at least touch on the story. So there's all these reports swirling around that Apple Car is coming. We heard one report that it was coming in 2021. We heard another report from Reuters that it was coming in 2024. And now we have Ming-Chi Kuo, the only Apple analyst that ever gets anything right. And he says that... This is not happening in 2021. It's not happening in 2024 for this, for that matter. I'm reading from the uh, Mac Rumors story. Uh, earlier this week, Reuters reported that Apple is targeting 2024 for its production of its long-rumored electric vehicle with next-level battery technology. Uh, Ming-Chi Kuo says it's unlikely that this car is going to launch until 2025 to 2027 at the earliest. He said the market is overly bullish on the Apple car's launch schedule. And he advised investors to avoid buying Apple Car-related stocks at this time. He, uh, there's some other interesting parts of the story. So Quo said that uh, there is uncertainty about how competitive Apple would be in the EV self-driving vehicle market due to the company lagging behind in deep learning artificial intelligence. And he made an interesting point. He said the market has high expectations for Apple Car. Still, we remind investors that although Apple has a variety of competitive advantages, it is not always successful in new businesses. For example, Apple failed to enter the smart speaker market. The demand for HomePod and HomePod Mini were lower than expected. And this is a quote, and the development of new smart speaker models has been temporarily suspended, which I thought was actually kind of big news. Like, ha had you guys heard this? We, we thought that Apple was working on more smart speaker models. But according to Ming-Chi Kuo, they're not. They have temporarily suspended it because... I mean, according to him... Because the Mini is a bust? Yeah, essentially. This actually kind of worries me a little bit. Oh, I love my HomePod yeah. so much. I really want Apple to expand on the HomePods and make better models. I would love to see them add real uh, surround sound support for the HomePods. I would love to, love to see them add a HomePod subwoofer that you could use with your HomePod surround sound system for like real actual surround sound instead of just uh, virtualized surround sound. So yeah, I thought well, that was a sad bit of news. Yeah, yes, I thought was. that was interesting. I, I don't, I, you really want a subwoofer? I mean, isn't that the whole point oh, of these yeah. things? Are, are you kidding? Uh, Amazon just released a, let's see here, Echo subwoofer. And yeah, there we go. Amazon Echo subwoofer. Powerful subwoofer for your Echo requires compatible Echo device. I think this would be cool. Look, this is the dream right here. I'm showing a picture of this is the dream <laughs> of two not not with Amazon, but with of two Echo. Where'd the picture go? What the heck, it, it just disappeared entirely. Of two Echo dots with a subwoofer, and there we go, right there. It's a Echo, Echo, Echo subwoofer, subwoofer with two <laughs> Echo dots. Now look. <laughs> Make think of what you will about this particular setup, but the dream for me is wireless surround sound. I know Sonos does this too. In fact, I would love to review Sonos's surround sound wireless surround sound system because they have a wireless subwoofer as well. But I want surround sound. I just don't want all the wires everywhere, right? And the dream scenario is all the speakers just have a power cable and that's it, and then all the signal is wireless. And the one thing that people often complain about with the HomePod, especially with the HomePod Minis, is the lack of bass. But the mid and the, and the high sound, and I did a whole video about this on my YouTube channel, sounds really good when you're watching movies and television, television shows and stuff. But it's missing that bass. Well, what if Apple did 
an, an Apple subwoofer. I think that'd be pretty cool, a wireless subwoofer. So how did we end up on this when we were talking about an Apple car? Oh, that's right. It's in the same story. <laughs> you turn. The, story. the same way we always end up in most of our stories, complete tangents. So there's your Apple car update. At the very least, if, that, if this makes you sad, just know that you probably got a pretty nice Apple stock boost because that Apple stock uh, or the Apple car story sent the Apple stock going up big time. And uh, it broke out of its sideways cycle finally after like three months. Do we know anybody who's holding any Apple stock? You know, just to disclose. I, I've, got, <laughs> I've got some ducats in Apple stock, if that's what you're asking. And full disclosure, the only reason I ever say anything pos- po- positive about Apple stuff is because I own stock. <laughs> I don't actually like their products. I don't even use their products. Um, I mean, I use an Android phone. And so, but I'm, I'm really hoping that if I say enough positive things about Apple products, you all will buy enough Apple products that it will send my stock price way up and what I don't a, retire. What you know? a great scheme. <laughs> Full You're disclosure. evil genius. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> That's my strategy. Hasn't worked for me yet, but I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> all right. Well, before we dive into our favorite picks of the year, Lewis, would you like to at least say a few words about the Cult of Mac? watch store i feel like you guys should change the name to something else like the cult of mac we have oh, it did. is now called the cult of mac store it's a like when forward. apple dropped the computer from the name okay <laughs> tell us about the store lewis well uh you know there's all kinds of uh fantastic accessories in there for your apple watch yes but also for uh iphones and you know, there's all kinds of stuff in there uh i don't think we have any AirPods Max uh, accessories yet, yet, but, uh, you know, I'm sure we will at some point. Anyway, uh, if you got a new uh, phone or a new watch or anything like that, I mean, you're going to want to get a case. You're going to want to get stands, charging stands. You're going to want to get new bands. I mean, can you have enough Apple Watch bands? I I always want more. I I wish I had this picture to show you. Um, (laughs) Colt cast listener and all-around great guy, Zach Hicks. He yeah. has an unbelievable collection of Apple Watch bands. Like, yeah. when I first saw it, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I think he has, like, 36 different watches. Wow. And you know what I, that means? He's probably got just as many pairs of matching shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, Lewis, I cut you off. Go ahead. Uh, so, it's a great, uh, you know, it's it's a great just, uh, curated it, location for all your Apple accessories. Yeah, we've got a, we got a bunch of stuff in there from uh, some manufacturers you've heard of and some you haven't uh they're all good it's all good quality stuff and it's uh it's all pretty reasonably priced so you know if you want to uh trick some stuff out or get some gifts for people who got some gifts it's a good place to shop as far as i can tell uh that's all i got to say okay (laughs) i don't think we have any special sales going on right now i mean there's 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 always something i mean we got a couple of like 20 percent off things going yeah there's always there's always a bunch of stuff that's uh, that's on sale yeah there's always there's always discounts and we're always adding new things i mean uh, there's all kinds of things in there a little uh it ranges from like really inexpensive high quality watch bands and uh cute little uh there's some of those those little ilago apple watch kind of chargers or whatever uh stands i guess the term is it they're like they're, they're they would have been great stocking stuffers too bad you missed that uh <laughs> too bad you but, missed that sucker but then oh, this you is know cool. oh yeah this also is... goes up to like uh you know really really super high end those juke bands i mean i i love those juke bands uh some great stands for you know once once you start adding all these devices you know maybe you need a stand that or a charger that does three or four different things at a time. It, it goes it, the entire gamut of stuff. For, if you like Apple products, it's a great place to buy Apple accessories. Yeah, and it's curated. That's the, that's the important part. Is it's not just a bunch of cheap garble, garbage that you're not going to actually love. It's like premium quality stuff that we think is good. So that's that's the secret sauce right there, the special cane sauce right there, as we say. <laughs> Uh, all right, store.cultimac.com, store.cultimac.com. Oh, right, the URL. If you're interested in that, <laughs> uh, store.cultimac.com. All right, well, this is uh, our final Picks of the Year segment. We've been doing this all month, and we had a lot of great picks, and I have a feeling that we're going to peter out this show. In fact, I don't even know if these two dudes have any picks at all, but Pre-petered. I've got four picks, and I was – thinking I was going to have to like maybe just go with one since I was going to have to share the time with Lewis and 
Leander, but it seems like maybe I can just go with all four. What do you guys think? Leander, do you got, do you got anything? Um, well, uh, why don't you ask Lewis first, and I'll okay. see if I can come up with something by okay. the time. Uh... Lewis, do you got anything? Well, uh, as discussed, uh, yeah. I have not had any time to get caught up on TV, yeah. barely seen any movies. So uh, I'm just going <laughs> to return to the old uh, the old well of <laughs> <laughs> what did I do more of this year? Drink? Drinking. Oh, <laughs> well, people like talking about drinking. This is a fantastic service. So, okay, okay first off. You know, live here in California in the Bay Area. I, I, I I'm just gonna say I, I've had a good time. I've gone to some of the wineries. They used to be able, like right now, you can't do nothing, but you know, you can you can go out and visit your wineries, and, and they've done an amazing job of letting you actually uh, taste wine in their outdoor environments in safe ways. Even when when everything else is shut down, I mean, some of these wineries, I, I've gone to a few of these, and and they do a really good job. You actually feel comfortable and slightly normal right <laughs> in fact some of them are actually like kind of nicer because it's like you know not a, a giant crowd of people and everybody jostling for some wine it's like you're sitting down in a beautiful italian riviera situation i mean oh, it's really kind of pleasant uh -huh. um i was gonna i was gonna mention the the fine wineries that uh i've been visiting yeah, this year i'll pull up the urls too just tell me what they are oh yeah you'll be able to do that for sure frick <laughs> winery up in geyserville was fantastic Odonata down in Salinas, Adastra, Adastra, Robledo, and Jacuzzi and Carneros up in Sonoma. So I know that we here in California aren't even supposed to be traveling. And if you don't live here, you shouldn't be coming here right now. So uh, what I'm going to recommend, the, the service that I've used this year oh, okay. is called Naked Wines. Have you guys heard of this? Have I mentioned this before? Uh, I, I may have mentioned this on the air. I, you have not mentioned this, and I'm hoping that you aren't going to send me any pictures of you enjoying this wine. <laughs> you, you, you actually are allowed to drink their wine while clothed. Okay, good, because um, I just went to their website without even thinking about it. Oh, man. Right. If you haven't heard of it, it uh, it's basically like a co-op for independent wine producers, something like that. Uh, you join, you put in $40 a month, and you're basically just putting it in a piggy bank. And when you hit some certain amount, like, Hundred bucks or something for a case, hundred twenty bucks. They send you, they ship you a case of wine. You know, you pick what you want. You can, you can absolutely pick exactly which wines you want, or you can let them say, okay, here's our twelve best-selling red wines. Uh, they ship it for free. You know, I mean, obviously there are state laws about you know where it can go or what, but sure. um, the the shipping is always fast. Everything shows up beautiful shape. Uh, what I like about it is that it's it, it's um. They, they partner with these independent winemakers, right? And some mm -hmm. of these guys are like people who produce wine for, you know, a giant winery that you've heard of, right? But but what they've always wanted to do is not produce this, you know, really great selling hot Chardonnay, but they've always wanted to do this this thing with this little varietal you've never heard of, right? Uh -huh. So so what Naked Wines does is they give these producers this opportunity to, to sometimes to make their dream wine, right? And... Uh, so you, they're they're basically acting like an independent record label for winemakers, huh. and you are supporting them. Uh, you know, you take out wine when you take out money when you want to, right? So you you say, okay, well, you know, they every now and then they send me a thing like, oh, you've got two hundred forty dollars in your account. You sure, sure you don't want some wine? I mean, it's, it's all really, <laughs> you know, pleasant and whatever. It's just sitting there. And you say, yeah, okay, great, and and you can go in, you can look on their website. You can review the wines that you order that you like, and and then they'll uh, they'll you know they'll do recommendations for you based on that. Like, oh, we think that this is probably a red wine you'll like because it's hearty, whatever. And they that's not what they would say ever, but it's, it's always I haven't more heard that word used to describe wine. Always more flowery than that. <laughs> it's wine after all, right? But uh, you know, you you have a chance to communicate with the winemakers. A lot of times, you know, sometimes you. Uh, you review it. You get a comment from them back. You know, like I can't believe you didn't like my wine. What's wrong with you, um, <laughs> you swine? <laughs> I, I how dare you? Uh, how dare you effing. say anything bad about my wine? But uh, the other thing, okay. So I know people are like, oh, jeez, you know, another thing to subscribe to, right? But and and then you're definitely ordering wine that you've never heard of, right? Because these are people. These are you know, you can't go down to Safeway and pick this wine up. This is like, mm -hmm. it, and it's it, all the wine that I've ever had. I mean, I, there's been a couple that I haven't been crazy about. And, and some that are just, you know, fine. Some that are really awesome. But what I think in general, they're all 
pretty interesting wines. And now they got wines from, you know, California, uh, Oregon, Washington, not, also from, you know, Italy, Spain, Portugal. They've kind of been growing over the past few years. I, I don't know if they've been doing fantastic during COVID or or not. I mean, I would suspect probably have. But then I thought Hopsy was going to make it too. So who yeah, knows? Yeah, and, and we um, promoted them on the show, and then they died. Poor Hopsy. Yeah, that but might so their downfall. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that's awesome about naked wine, I mean, aside from everything else that's awesome, is that they have a money back guarantee. Oh. If you say, you know what, I wasn't crazy about this wine, instantly they credit you uh, that amount. I mean. You can't do better than that. And if you like wine and, and you're in and, and the other thing about it is it's all very reasonably priced. I mean, if you look at it, average bottle of wine on their their website, you know, 12 bucks, maybe something like that. You can get some for eight, 10, 12. You, you could pay more, but uh, they're all very reasonably priced considering shipping's included. I, 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 it, I think it's a, a fine, fine service. And, uh, you know. Maybe I won't need so much wine in 2021, but I'm, uh, I'm confused about one thing. You said you pay 40 bucks a month. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's basically sitting there in escrow, right? I mean, your money is sitting in your account. So you don't get 40 bucks worth of wine every month. No, it, it's only triggered every. You order it whenever you want. You know, you don't ever have. To. You you could just put 40 dollars in there every month and and let it go up to four thousand uh, dollars. You know, uh, I typically order. You know, a case every few months or something like that. It, it's it's a it's a great way to try different wines that you're not going to get anywhere else. So you're never going to stumble upon, and you don't have to leave your house. You just order it online. Very simple. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, yeah, you're putting money in there every month, right? But I mean, if you, let's just be honest, that's like two bottles of wine, right? Yeah. And if Boy. you're like, hey, this this wine didn't get me nearly as drunk as I thought it was going to. I want my money back. <laughs> Boom. Like, every time I drink a bottle of your wine in one sitting, it gets me less drunk than the time before. What have you guys done to your wine recipe? It's just not working the way it used to. I'm trying to forget it, 2020, and it's not working. It's really – it's a pretty cool thing, though. I mean, you, you start to uh, – you, you know, a lot of winemakers, they produce multiple varietals, right? And uh, so you start to recognize people that you like, and, you, you know, hey, they got a new one this year. Let's try that. So All right, cool. I don't so, know. So, com. I'll put a link to it in the – in the show notes if you would like to check it out uh lander was that enough vamping for you to actually i didn't, I didn't think about it <laughs> he was so interested in what you were talking <laughs> I was so about busy listening to lewis and his wine talk <laughs> top 10 bubbles okay tell you what i'll go and you'll be so thoroughly bored <laughs> that you'll have plenty of time to uh, actually think about your own your own picks here so well, actually you just re- yeah you just gave me an idea okay uh, the very- i like <laughs> you, you got something? Okay, well, let me let me rattle off a couple of these first, and uh, maybe we can go back and forth. So the very first thing that I wanted to talk about is just a personal favorite. It's just the fact that we're doing Cult Cast Live. And if you're here watching us live, thank you for being here. If you're watching the video on YouTube afterwards, uh, thank you for watching. This production was such a tremendous effort to get this working. Uh, it, it took us... A long time to figure out how to get it working. And oh, look at that. My Twitter profile's gone. There we go. Hey, there we are. And after all the testing, after all the experimenting, it's actually been working pretty dang well. I'm shocked that it's working this well. So that was one of my personal favorites, just getting this show live. Getting getting to see everyone chat in real time is fun. Getting to interact with you guys in real time has been great. And then also just having like a video, a visual element to the show where we can like pull up the websites that we're talking about and show you them. Now, sometimes that gets us into a little bit of trouble, especially when you're talking about Ted Lasso and TC, oh, TC says, uh-uh, y'all. And he hits the, uh, the legal team to tr- do a takedown of you because he doesn't like the fact that you're on his web page. That can be a problem. But for everything else, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. So I, get, I think probably one of my biggest picks this year one of my favorite things this year, can I go to my uh, my YouTube, is the, let me hit browser mode. Well, before I hit browser mode, let me go pick the video. It's just the fact that Apple did a uh, an update on AirPods and they added Dolby Atmos support for, for AirPods. This was a huge story in my book because it just took the AirPods, which were already some of my favorite products that existed, and it gave them a whole new functionality that they didn't have before and if you're not if you're not aware of what happened so apple added the ability for your home pods to support dolby atmos with your apple tv 4k and they also allow you to choose your your home pods as the default audio for your 
Apple TV. So when you turn on your Apple TV, the audio automatically just goes straight to your HomePods, which before you had to manually do it every time, which was kind of annoying. And those two things have just drastically increased my love for the HomePods. They sound so good, especially the full-size HomePods. The bass is full and rich, and it adds a whole new dynamic to your content that you just weren't hearing before unless you had like an actual sound bar. You're going to hear stuff that audio engineers and Foley spent hours and hours perfecting just so that you could hear the lightsaber effects or a blaster going by you. That's stuff that you just probably weren't even hearing before. The crackle of footsteps, you know, the nuance of liftoff with some kind of spacecraft. You get to hear all that stuff. And the HomePods do this so well. If your content supports Dolby Atmos, uh, you will hear sound effects moving across your face, all around your head, behind you, even though you only have <laughs> two HomePods in front of you. It's truly spectacular. And they also support 5.1 and 7.1 surround sound virtualized. So the fact that you can just have two HomePods that you use for music in your living room, and now all of a sudden they are building out your complete home theater experience for no additional cost, I think that's pretty cool. That was one of my favorite things of the entire year. And I moved my HomePods from being in front of me in the Colt Command Center here to in front of my television. And that's where they live now because they're just so good at delivering the the atmosphere that your content has that you weren't hearing before. Okay, so that's my, uh, that's my number one pick, or I guess my number two pick. Uh, my number four pick here, I'm staying in browser mode, is this bike from rad power bikes this thing is called the rad wagon and this thing is like a cadillac of electric bicycles i've been using this thing for probably two months now and if you have kids or you like to ride around and carry packages cargo this thing is like a tank but it rides like a luxury vehicle it's super smooth it has power and it doesn't feel like a bike that is as big as it is and with this long deck in the back you can have a basket attached so you can carry all sorts of cargo, or you can do what I did. This has support for two uh, uh, Thule Yep uh, child bike seats. So you can put two kid bike seats in the back here and then carry your kids around with you on bike rides, and my kids love it. It's like What do you do with cool the other two? They have to run alongside? I just, I just leave them, like yeah. Like the secret service? <laughs> they just leave them? I just leave them there. I'm like, see you later, kid, and I, I leave them there crying. <laughs> No, they fight with <laughs> each other over who gets to go on the Aww. bike rides because bike rides with Papa E is just so much fun. And the <laughs> other thing I love is this bike has gears. I know that might not sound like revolutionary to a lot of people, but a lot of – well, one of the electric bikes I reviewed earlier this year was the Rad Runner, which is a great bike, but it doesn't have gears. It's a single-speed bike. And the Rad Runner, it has seven gears and then it has four or five different power levels for the battery. So you mix and match those two things for your scenario and you always feel like you're getting the right amount of power. Whereas with the Rad Runner, it was either underpowered or overpowered because it felt like it was missing some of that fine tuning ability that the Rad Wagon 4 has. So it's just a great bike. Rad, Rad Power Bikes has been around for, I don't know, 10 years maybe. And when they first started, their bikes were kind of rudimentary, I would say. But over the course of 10 years, they've really refined them a lot. And they're so much better now than they ever used to be. So it's just a great product. And it's $1,700, which as far as electric bikes go, is really not very expensive at all. Electric bikes can be $4,000, $5,000 easily. So this is one of the least expensive and one of the most fun, versatile options that uh, I've used at this point. Um, I think I have one more thing. Okay, I do. This will be a real quick one. This has been the year of cameras. If you're into cameras, this has been an absolutely incredible year. You have the, uh, the, the uh, Canon R5, the R6. You have the, uh, the Red Komodo. You have the Canon C70. You have the Sony A7 III, A7S III. I mean, if you're into doing content, if you like photography, this is probably the most exciting year in cameras that we've ever had. They're, all these camera companies are like duking it out. And the amount of camera that you can get for your money now is totally insane. Like the fact that you can get a Red Komodo, which has absolutely magical picture quality. I mean, it's $6,000. It's not cheap. But 
Red cameras are usually ten, twenty thousand dollars, and now you can get a red camera with that iconic red picture quality with those unbelievable highlight roll-offs for six thousand dollars is totally mind-blowing, and I think it's wholly exciting. So there you go. Those are my picks. I could go on, but I gotta pee real bad, so I'm gonna send it back to <laughs> Leander. Who can do his pick? Because I'm like, if I don't go to the bathroom soon, I'm gonna explode. So Leander, take it away. All right. Well, so uh, Lewis just reminded me yeah, um, about uh, something that I've been enjoying quite recently, which I got earlier in the year, and it's called it's a it's a portable oil vaporizer. So oh it's boy. for vaporizing concentrates. It's called the Puffco Plus. <laughs> the Puffco uh, Plus. <laughs> You know what? You oh, could not no. have had a pick that would have satisfied me any more than that. The Puffco <laughs> Plus. <laughs> yep. This go ahead. Thing, I'm listening. It took a little while, to, i got to be honest, to, to get used to it. You know, like at first I didn't like it so much. It really wasn't doing it for me. It wasn't producing enough vapor, but I, I, I kind of learned how to use it. Um, and and since, since learning how to use it, it it's, it's absolutely fantastic. So you, it, it, it's, a, it's a pan. It has a little chamber in the top. You unscrew the, the, uh, the, the lid. And inside, there's um, the mouthpiece has a um, a loading tool, so you use that to scoop up a little bit of uh, concentrate, put it inside the chamber, and then it has a, what they call a sesh mode. So you double click <laughs> the button. The sesh mode. This is that was, getting better. That was the that was the secret to learning how to use it. it was the sesh mode, um, and it gives it 12 seconds of heating, and you have to sort of wait until it heats up, and then you hit it when it's when it's done, when it starts flashing, and boom. Fantastic, huge puffy clouds of vapor, um, and you know you're just totally in heaven. This thing is is fantastic. It's really really a good pen, and it's on sale right now. Like it used to be ninety bucks, eighty nine ninety nine. Now on sale for sixty four ninety nine. If you go to um, the Puffco website, I think it's uh, is it the Puffco Plus battery? Well, the, it's called the Puffco Plus, so it comes with a battery. It's like a pen vaporizer, so it's it has a you know a, a, a oh pen I got it. I was looking at the wrong battery, one. Okay, and then a chamber that you screw on top. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it. I was looking at the wrong model. All right, so now it's, oh, it's plus. on sale for $65. You can hit those huge Cheech and Chong clouds and uh, activate sesh mode and put on oh, Depeche right. mode and just kick back <laughs> and let the rainbow colors fly. You know what? I wasn't sure that we could do it, but this really did turn out to be probably the best show of the year right here. I wasn't sure it was going to happen. I know I made promises at the beginning, but I think we nailed it. And uh, we should go ahead and wrap it up there because it's not going to get any better than that. Oh, they got a rainbow version. <laughs> they got a That's rainbow the one version I got. right I got the there. Rainbow, the special rainbow version. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for us. That's all the cult casts we have for you guys this week. But if you want to come say hi to us on Twitter, we're all there. I'm at Airfon, E R F O N. The other is at L K Lewis is at Lewis Wallace. This is in the cult cast. The best 30 plus minute app conversation you're going to hear all year long. New episodes of the cult cast come out every Thursday night. I want to thank everyone for listening. Thanks for everyone for, st for sticking with us here for this whole broadcast. And we'll see you guys next year. The Puff Co. Plus. Leander, just when I think that you couldn't outdo yourself, I was wrong. Do they have a picture of the, of the rainbow? Oh, wait a second. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Look at that thing. That looks like a magical unicorn horn. That's what a unicorn's horn looks like right there. All right, guys. Happy New Year, everyone. It's been fun. Yeah, Happy New Year. See you next year. Happy New Year. You got the rainbow one? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it's still. I wish I got the other one, actually. <laughs> Not very discreet. <laughs> Not exactly a discreet look when you're trying to put it into sesh mode. <laughs> sesh mode. Sesh, sesh mode. Do you activated. listen to Depeche mode while you're in <laughs> sesh mode? Sesh mode. Yeah, I should do. Every time, every time I think about sesh mode, I just start laughing. <laughs> I'm in some sesh mode. Oh, Lewis, I literally made that joke. You just stole it from me. I literally, I literally made that joke.